And my contention is, we have stayed together as a nation because we have actually stayed democratic. It's actually a factor which has done that. It's not, otherwise we would have split up. And I'll explain why. why and I'll actually talk about the parliament, which is the core part of my life. So parliament is at the core of our democracy. I mean, we all accept that, right? I mean, that is the representative institution for which we vote as a democratic body uh, at the national level. And of course, we also have representative institutions at the state level, which are our state legislatures where we vote for the MLAs and also as an executive body at the local level where you'll have, if you're in a city, you have municipal corporations or councils, if you're in a village, you have panchayats. Uh, but at the national level, it's parliament. And it's at the core of, center of the whole democratic experiment we do. What does parliament do? It's important to understand and why I'm by contention. As far as its functions go, parliament has primarily three large functions. It makes all the laws that we live by. So, uh, okay, when I'm saying parliament in some of these, it is a short form for parliament and state legislatures. I mean, just take it as that appropriately. So every law that we need to abide by was either passed by parliament or by the state legislature in the state will. So it's a lawmaking body. Second, which I would say is even more important, is parliament holds the government of the day to account for its action. It's a check on the government. So parliament can remove the government by a no confidence motion. Parliament can, parliamentarians question on a daily basis using question hour. Committee meetings, they question the government, they hold them to account. So there are multiple ways that the government is held accountable. And that's extremely important in a democracy. That's because when we vote for a government, it has to be accountable to the people. It's accountable to the people through parliament. So accountable, being accountable to our representatives. Third is its financial function. So parliament, every any tax that is imposed on you that you have to pay, a tax cannot be imposed on you unless there is a law for that tax. And that law has to be passed either by parliament or the state legislature, depending upon whether the jurisdiction is at the center of the state. So taxation power, and on the flip side, the government of India cannot spend even one rupee unless that has been, that has a prior sanction of parliament. So the budget that will be presented on 1st February also includes an expenditure budget. It has a ministry-wise demand for grants, which is examined by parliament and they approve. And if you actually go to detailed demand for grants, it has line item level of detail. So they can't even change from one line item to another without prayer sanction of parliament. So parliament controls the purse of the central government. So in a way, we are paying through taxes and that parliament on our behalf is keeping a check on the central government spending by pre-approving and post-monitoring. So these three things in this. 